Hey, did you know in the Northern Hemisphere, Memorial Day is just about 90 days away. Memorial Day, the unofficial start to summer. So here's a question for you. How much do you want to weigh going into this summer season? Before I lost my weight, when I was back in the day when I was struggling, this is the time of year where I would start to get worried if I hadn't lost the holiday weight yet. And I can't ever remember <laughs> losing the holiday weight that fast. Now, I don't want you to like go out and find some crazy diet because you're like, oh my goodness, summer is coming. Let me try to lose this weight before summer comes. No, I want you to learn how to lose. I'm taking y'all to school starting Monday, April 10th. I'm going to teach you how to understand how your body releases weight. The way you lose weight is different from the way that your sister loses weight or your best friend loses weight. Why? Because of this thing called bio-individuality. This simply means each person has their own specific nutrition and health needs as well as their own routines, practices, and preferences that work for them in order to lose weight. Now, I'm going to teach you how to discover what works best for you and your body. And as you discover in this 30-day group coaching program, as you discover your best weight loss protocol, you're going to essentially learn how to lose weight for good. Because once you understand what your body needs or what it doesn't need to lose weight, you have that knowledge forever. That's not going to change. And you'll be able to tweak it as your life circumstances change. So beginning April 10th, you can learn to lose 10 pounds in 30 days without dieting. As a listener to this podcast, you already know you want a different approach to weight loss. You don't want to go find another diet again. So inside this 30-day program, you will learn to manage your mindset around food so you can really lose weight for the last time. Enrollment opens on Sunday, April 2nd, and will stay open for a week. So it will close on Sunday, April 9th. So mark the date on your calendar and go to jenniferdent.com forward slash learn to lose to add your name to the wait list. So once you're on the wait list, you're going to get a chance to enroll early. So be sure to add your name to the wait list so you don't miss out on any announcements, any early enrollment information. And you'll also learn more about the 30-day group program in the coming weeks learn to lose. So go to jenniferdent.com forward slash learn to lose. Now let's jump into today's episode. If you're the person who tells yourself, okay, seven o'clock, we're going to stop eating dinner. We're going to stop eating, period. Kitchen is closed. But something happens between 7 p.m. and your bedtime and you end up snacking. This episode is for you. You're listening to the Stop Dieting Forever podcast, episode 144. What if it were possible to achieve your goal weight and stay there permanently without dieting? Welcome to the Stop Dieting Forever podcast, where you will discover the key components that most diets won't tell you because they want you to keep coming back. Not here. This is your last stop on the weight loss struggle bus. I am your host, Jennifer Dent Brown, life and weight loss coach, and I am going to show you how to stop dieting forever. Let's jump into today's episode. Hey, y'all. Jennifer Dent Brown, your certified health, life and weight loss coach here delivering another episode to you. I want to talk specifically to my nighttime eaters, my nighttime noshers. You know who you are. You're the ones that when you sit down to eat dinner, you eat just a little bit too much every night. Or you finish eating dinner, but between the time that the kitchen is closed and bedtime, you're still looking for stuff to eat. This episode is for you. 
If you're the person who tells yourself, okay, seven o'clock, we're going to stop eating dinner. We're going to stop eating, period. Kitchen is closed. But something happens between 7 p.m. and your bedtime, and you end up snacking the BLTs, taking the bites, licks, and tastes, trying to quiet this craving that you have for something, right? That insatiable desire to eat something isn't caused by physical hunger. That's why you find yourself continuously looking for something to eat and you're like opening the refrigerator. What does this look good? What do I have a taste for? And you're tasting things and nothing seems to satisfy that craving because it's not physical hunger. What it is, is an emotional hunger created by the thoughts swirling around in your head. I see this a lot with my clients. They come to me and they're eating fine all day, no problems, but something happens when the sun goes down. I think one of my clients called it the witching hour. Something happens when the sun goes down or dinner's on the table and it's just like everything that they know goes out the window and they just eat and eat and eat and eat. And when I coach them on this behavior, what I find is that usually it only happens during the week. On the weekends, it doesn't really happen as much. So then I ask them, that gives me a little tip, right? I ask them, okay, so how are you ending your work day? And for them, it's usually they just stop working and they roll right into their second job, right? <laughs> Picking up the kids, getting dinner prepared, driving home from work, all the things. Right, the evening shift has begun. And there isn't a mental break in between those two jobs. So what's happening is they're taking the stress from their workday right into their home life. And they aren't even aware of what they're doing because they do it every single day. They're literally on autopilot. So I want you to think about your own work to after work transition. What are you taking with you from work or from the daytime into your evening hours. Here's what I want you to pay attention to. An unmanaged mind can lead to evening overeating. You wanna know how do you stop overeating in the evenings? Very simple. We need to figure out how to manage your mind. So you're gonna come up with a protocol to help you manage your mind at the end of your day, the end of your work day before you go into your second shift. And one of the easiest things that you can do, and this is what I tell my clients to do, is pull out your planner, pull out a notebook, and just do a simple five to 10 minute writing exercise. I know you gotta like rush and pick up the kids, but I wanna make sure, put this on your calendar. Give yourself five to 10 minutes before you run out of your office and move into your second shift. Because it's really, really important to do this writing exercise. I'm gonna tell you why. But first of all, here are the three questions I want you to answer during this five to 10 minute period at the end of your day. Real simple. What's going well, right? What are the things that went well today is your first question you're going to answer. Your second question is, was I in goal achievement mode today? Why or why not? Goal achievement is, were you focused on your weight loss? Were you focused on your goal? Were you focused on your health goal? Why or why not? And the third thing you're going to ask yourself, what am I forgetting to believe about myself? What am I forgetting to believe? Now, you get extra points if you answer those three questions and then you look at your schedule for tomorrow and you get prepared. You plan out your day by time blocking your tasks or maybe writing the first things you want to get done in the morning, you know, eat the frog first and getting that all set. Some of you may already do that as a productivity practice, but I want you to do that after you answer those three questions. And then when you do that, when you're done, 10 minutes, set the timer on your phone, close your notebook, put your pen down, turn off your computer, close your laptop, take a deep breath, and go home. Doing this little five to 10 minute activity is a game changer. It allows you to add closure to your day. And for those of you who are working from home, turn off your computer and maybe just close the door to your office or put your laptop in a drawer if you're just working at a desk or at a table, 
like signal to your brain that we are done with work now and now it's time to focus on the next part of our day. You can be present with your family, be present with yourself. Ask yourself, what do I need right now? And give it to yourself and leave work at work. So you may be thinking, okay, Jennifer, all well and good. That's wonderful. But how is this going to help me with weight loss? Great question. So glad you asked. (laughs) Book ending your day with writing is super effective for weight loss. I said it's going to be a game changer when you start doing it consistently. Writing creates a strong mindset for long-term weight loss. If I were teaching you how to drop weight super quick, I would tell you to leave work and then go do an outdoor 45-minute workout before you go to bed. Some of you may have tried that protocol before. (laughs) It's hard, right? But I'm not telling you that. The Stop Dotting Forever weight loss process is grounded in mindset. It is not grounded in physical activity. Physical activity is important, but it's not going to get you to your forever weight and keep you there. Changing your mindset is what's going to get you to your forever weight. And the reason why my process works so well and the reason why my clients are getting such great results is because literally they are changing their attitudes and their beliefs. They're changing their attitudes and their beliefs to ones that support their healthy habits instead of ones that support their unhealthy habits. Writing at the end of your day allows you to overcome your negativity bias. And I've talked about the negativity bias in a previous podcast. But writing at the end of the day and answering those three questions allows you to quiet your bratty brain, overcome your negativity bias by writing down all the things that are going well today. Just answering that first question is going to head off a lot of negative emotions that you may be taking home with you and you're not even aware. Because if you're an emotional eater, emotional eaters eat because of their unmanaged negative emotions. So if you're taking home on the regular feelings like anxiety or stress or inadequacy or frustration or anger, and you're an emotional eater, you're going to eat mindlessly until bedtime. And that is the habit loop that you are in. So we want to work on our mindset first to break that bad habit and then work on our mindset to create the mindset of a healthier habit. Okay? So yesterday, ironically, I delivered a corporate wellness workshop for the employees at the biggest health insurance company in Philadelphia. This is my fourth time speaking with them. So much fun. But the topic of my workshop was writing your way to wellness. And I taught them in order for them to lose physical fat, they've got to reduce the mental fat. And writing helps them to see the patterns and the habits that are getting in the way of their ideal weight. So side note, if you have an organization or a company and you would love for me to come speak to your employees, talk to me about it. Go to jenniferdent.com forward slash media, put in your request, and let's see if we can make it happen. So yes, I do corporate wellness workshops and in-person speaking and engagements. Okay, but I digress. Let's get back to writing. Daily writing is a practice. It's not something that a lot of us do very well. I know I was not a person, I've talked about my journey with self-coaching and writing. I was not the person that did it well. (laughs) I did it very badly and inconsistently. But I have learned I can't ignore them. So I do it every single day because I know the power of writing. So daily writing is a practice. I do have some clients who come to me and like, oh, I love journaling. And I'm like, great, then you're gonna (laughs) love this process. But for the rest of us who don't like writing, it's okay. You can learn how to write. And you can learn how to write in a productive way that will support your weight loss. Daily writing for weight loss is a skill that you can learn, and I will teach you that. So inside Learn to Lose, which is the 30-day group weight loss program, you're going to learn the skill of writing for weight loss, and you're going to develop the practice because you're going to be focused on doing it every single day for 30 days. Are you going to be perfect at it? Probably not, and that's okay. But what I also teach you inside the 30 days is how to fail forward. 
So we don't fail and quit. We fail forward. So you're going to understand why it's so difficult for you and come up with a plan to overcome the resistance to writing every single day. It's a very different approach to weight loss, but this is why it works so well. So when you're trying to change your habits, your mindset is really important. It's key. And writing will help facilitate that shift that you need to be consistent with your healthy habits. Now, when you hear me say writing, I'm not talking about like writing a monologue, right? It's literally five to 10 minutes. It's three questions you're asking yourself at the end of the day. You can probably answer them in five minutes or less. What I find is that once you get writing, like you just want to keep going because you're starting to reveal new things and you're discovering things and you're like, oh, this is good. And you keep going, but start with five minutes. So if we were to look at this weight loss process that I teach, you're really learning to change your bottom line, your weight results from the top down, from your brain down to your waistline down to your feet, looking at the number on the scale. And writing is going to help you facilitate that and create the mindset to support these healthy habits that you have been inconsistent with. So again, Learn to Lose Enrollment opens on Sunday, April 2nd, and will close on Sunday, April 9th. And our group orientation will be led by me on Monday, April 10th. So I want to make sure that you get your name on the wait list because I may be giving away a bonus. And you want to make sure I always give the bonuses and the early enrollment. That always happens to the people on the wait list. So go to jenniferdent.com forward slash learn to lose and get your name on the wait list. And I want you to start to practice this end of the day book ending with these three questions. I'll give them to you again in case you forgot. The first question you're going to ask is, what's going well today? Was I in goal achievement mode today? Why or why not? And what am I forgetting to believe? Oh, let me tell you about that question. Why is that important? Because with this question, you are going to be reminding yourself, what is the goal that you're working towards? So inside of my program, I've talked about the identity statement, right? This is a great opportunity for you to revisit your identity statement. Lots of times when we're in kind of like stress mode or we're feeling anxious or we're just experiencing some sort of negative emotion, your brain goes into problemville. And when you're in problemville, you are literally seeing everything as a problem. And it's very difficult to move yourself out of problemville. But when you answer this question, what am I forgetting to believe? You can tap into the power of possibility. You can tap into like, oh, right, I am doing okay. I am doing a good job right now. Because you have this whole list of things that went well today. You have like, oh, these are the things that I did well. Look, look at that. Look at you, girl. Go, girl. Pat yourself on the back. I'm forgetting to believe that I actually am doing a good job. I actually am making progress towards my goal because your bratty brain is going to be like, you're not doing it right. You're not doing it perfect. You're not doing it. And it's very, very loud. So answering that question redirects your brain to what am I forgetting to believe? You're forgetting to believe maybe that it's possible that you are working towards your goal weight it's possible that you are getting it right. Okay, so that's a really, really important question to answer. So those are the three questions I want you to end your workday with before you move into your second shift. And do it for a week and see if that makes a difference in your evening eating habits. So before we close this podcast, because I've got a meeting to get to in one minute, I'm going to leave you with a quote that I included in my client's monthly newsletter. And the quote is, push yourself because no one else is going to do it for you. So simple, right? Push yourself because no one else is going to do it for you. All right, y'all. Live Lux. 
Go to jenniferdance.com, learn to lose, and put your name on the wait list. And I will see you in the next episode. If you liked today's episode of the Stop Dieting Forever podcast, and you want to learn more about creating a lifestyle instead of following a diet to lose weight permanently, be sure to visit jenniferdent.com. There, you'll learn more about my unique weight loss process and how it can work for you. Go to jenniferdent.com to discover what you can do to stop dieting forever.